How much trash do you think you produce in one day? It is estimated that the average American produces four pounds of trash every day. The EP, according to the EPA in 2018, about 12% of that trash is plastic waste. But that figure does not include all of the plastic waste that we've generated throughout the pandemic. Only about 9% of plastics ever made have been recycled. The remaining plastic waste is either burned, buried, or will find its way into our environment where it will break down into smaller and smaller pieces. Microplastics are small my, uh, plastic pieces that are sized five millimeters or less. Five millimeters is about the size of a pencil eraser. And most people associate microplastic pollution with single use plastics. But there are lesser known sources of microplastic pollution, such as from uh, tire wear and textiles. Annually, about 6.1 million metric tons of tire wear particles enter our environment. And these particles are one of the most common types of microplastic pollutants. Microplastic fibers that shed from textiles, such as in our clothing, make up about 35% of microplastics found in our waterways globally. And on top of all of this, the production of single-use plastics is project projected to double within the next 20 years. So it's no wonder that microplastics have been found everywhere we have looked. Microplastics have been found in the deepest trenches of our oceans, to the tallest peaks in our skies, and even in the remotest areas of the Western United States and Arctic. There is nowhere on this planet that plastic hasn't touched. Microplastics have infiltrated the food we eat, the water we drink, and even in the air we breathe. We are consuming our own trash. Humans are the most exposed species to microplastics, and our children are more exposed than adults, with more activity on the floors, followed by frequent hand-to-mouth transfers. What this all means for our health is still unclear, but it is evident that we are consuming microplastics because they have been found in adult feces as well as infant feces. Microplastics have also been found in excised human lung tissues, and now in our most precious parts, our blood, our breast milk, and our placentas. We cannot protect our children from plastics. They are exposed from womb to world. And this exposure is only projected to increase with increasing plastics production. Chemicals associated with plastics have been found to be endocrine and metabolic disrupting chemicals. And these chemicals can leach from microplastics once inside of our warm bodies. Plasticosis is a novel plastic-induced fibrotic disease that has just been defined by scientists three weeks ago. Ingested plastic particles can cause more scar tissue than pumice in the gastrointestinal tracts of seabirds in Australia. Our risk to endocrine disruption and plasticosis is dependent on our exposure to microplastics. And human exposure to microplastics is still not very well understood. Although I am interested in studying the health effects of microplastics, one question I would like to answer is, 
how much microplastic pollution is created by human activity? And to answer this question, I started with a blank canvas. This is the Black Rock Desert, located in northern Nevada. It is home to one of the largest temporary cities in the world, Black Rock City. Black Rock City exists for one week out of the entire year. And no, it's not a mirage. Black Rock City is constructed during the extraordinary event known as Burning Man. 80,000 citizens, no more than 80,000 citizens come to this desert every summer to build this beautiful city. And after the event, everyone and everything disappears without a trace, like it never existed, leaving nothing but a blank canvas. Black Rock City is the largest leave no trace city in the world, meaning after its existence, everything that is visible to the human eye is removed from the desert surface. Anything left behind is considered moop or matter out of place. And microplastics are considered moop. After the deconstruction of Black Rock City, volunteers perform an extensive cleanup of the desert surface. Black Rock City obtains a land, a land use permit from the Bureau of Land Management every year, which is contingent on the previous year's inspection for MOOP. More than one square foot per acre of MOOP found on the playa will fail this inspection. And Black Rock City has never failed this inspection. This means Black Rock City cannot leave more than 0.002% of MOOP on the playa. That's a crazy number. So anything that's left behind, which is about less than the width of a human hair, is left behind as micro moop. I have been visiting Black Rock City for half my life now. And in the summer of 2019, I was sitting in the dust and a curious thought popped into my mind. I wondered how much microplastics were hiding in this magical dust that was surrounding me. So I set course to study the dust. The following year, Dr. Janice Brainy published her results showing that it is raining microplastics in the remote Western United States. I knew that she would be the best collaborator to turn my idea into a reality. Another feature of the pristine Black Rock Desert is its fine dust that easily erodes from the desert surface. This creates a unique opportunity because we can capture that dust and analyze it for micromoop. And that is exactly what we're doing. This past summer, we collected atmospheric dust samples from the Black Rock Desert before, during, and after the construction and deconstruction of Black Rock City. And we are currently analyzing these, desert, or these dust samples for MicroMoop. Atmospheric dust samplers were placed at locations inside and outside of the city. And using dust flux tra trajectories, we can model MicroMoop micro transport in and out of the city. Our preliminary analyses have found uh, microplastics in the form of fibers, fragments, and spheres, as well as car tire particles. And these particles uh, range in size from nanometers to tens of micrometers and larger. 
The plastic polymer types that we have identified thus, thus far include PET, polyethylene, polypropylene, nylon, acrylic, rayon, and even crumb rubber from tires. Tire particles likely originate from vehicles in the form of mutant vehicles. And in 2019, 1,037 mutant vehicles were registered to operate within the city at a maximum speed of five miles per hour. Uh, tire wear particles can also come from bikes and airplanes. Black Rock City has its own airport designated as 88NV. And this city, or sorry, this airport was just shy of 86 flight operations compared to the nearest international airport located in Reno, Nevada during the same week in 2018. And microplastic fragments can, are likely from um, any kind of structures there, such as uh, construction materials, construction cones, PVC, as well as chipping paints on these temporary structures. More research is warranted to understand our exposure to microplastics. Although Black Rock City is not a perfect model of a concrete city, it does present a unique opportunity for us to identify and quantify microplastic pollution created from humans and our activities. And we can start to estimate our exposure based on population size, city area, and microplastics transport. Our exposure to microplastics and how it affects our health is still not very well understood. But studies indicate that exposure to microplastics is probably not good for us. So to reduce our exposure to plastics and microplastics, we need to reduce plastics in our world and in our lives. Next time you're shopping for a garment, maybe consider shopping secondhand or buying clothes that are made from natural fibers. Let's reduce the amount of car tires on the roads, you know, by considering carpooling, riding or biking or walking, and even taking public transportation. And whenever possible, choose reusable over disposable. I have been living a low waste lifestyle for eight years now, which is what led me here today. Reducing plastic waste in our lives is not a destination, but a journey. So please consider starting your journey today. I hope you enjoyed my talk or my story about Micromoop and the Anthropocene in the Black Rock Desert. Thank you.